everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Now, before I get started, let me say this here. Um, if you hear any background noise, sirens, anything like that, I live on the parade route, and today is St. Patrick's Day, and the white folks out there doing what they do. So, um, I don't know if you can hear it or not. I don't know if the, the mic is picking it up, but it's noisy as hell out there, you know what I'm saying? That tell you the kind of neighborhood I live in. But anyway, I just had to go ahead and talk about this right now, bro. You know, I couldn't wait. Because this is the realest YouTube channel you're going to have. The other day, BGS Ibmore read something from the New York Post explaining, well, they were blaming black men, basically, they were blaming men for the decline in relationships and marriages, right? Usual scapegoat type stuff, right? What they were saying, let me turn this down a little bit. What they were saying was that uh, men don't, men are not basically meeting the expectations of women, and as a result, they are, they are falling back on porn and social media as a way to compensate for what they're not getting from real from interaction with real women and they call this a crisis in connections but they're blaming the crises on the men now what was interesting i actually have a clip of bgs reading the article but he's kind of like reading it. he's he's really struggling through it so i don't really know if i want to play it you know what i'm saying um i do have it but you know but but that's not important. The important thing is, if you if you understood what I've been saying for the longest, I've been talking about the disconnect in the way we approach each other as human beings, that we don't talk to people with the understanding that not, that not everybody is a potential uh, wife or husband. You know what I'm saying? You don't interrogate people when you meet them. You don't ask people personal questions when you meet them. You gotta learn how to let the process build itself over time. And this is what the men that were being interviewed for the article actually said. But still the psychologists and the sociologists and all the experts, they still found some way to blame it on the men and blame it on porn and blame it on all this. No, the men are telling you what the problem is. The men are telling you. Now I'm gonna play the audio version. I'm not gonna worry about the um, I'm not gonna worry about the clip clip. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna play the audio version. I'm gonna let you hear. Excuse me. I'm gonna let you hear BGS reading this stuff, and then I'm gonna chime in a little bit. Listen to this. This is from the New York Post. Rate of single men in the U.S. looking for dates has declined. New data from the Pew Research Center has shown that 63% of men under 30 are single up from 51% in 2019. Dates feel more like job interviews now. Stop. Dates feel more like job interviews. Is this not what Brother Kush has been saying? I'm telling you, bro, this is the realest channel y'all gonna find on YouTube, man. They trying to block me, man. The algorithm ain't being fed to me. They trying to block me, man. But look, I'm gonna get it out here, bro. I'm gonna I'm I'm get this gangster to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all and y'all and y'all haters. Y'all gonna respect my gangster, bro. Is this not what I've been saying that I see as a problem on both sides? That they approach each other like they are interviewing someone for a job. You are being interrogated. Let me continue. Because I just said they got the I word. Much more like, what can you do for me and where is this going? See, the second they meet a stranger, they ask him, what can you do for me and where is this going? Bitch, this ain't going nowhere and I can't do nothing for you. We just met. How about us getting to know each other before you start asking me where this is going? This ain't going nowhere. We just met. We don't know if we're going to even like each other beyond a certain point. That's what the process is all about. But we don't want to do the process no more, bro. You know what I'm saying? But let, me, let me continue. The getting to know you period is gone, and that doesn't feel so great after coming out of isolation. The getting to know you period is gone. Now, he's reading from the article from the men that were interviewed. I cut a lot of stuff out, of course, because, you know, I didn't want to make it too long. 
but he's reading from the article. Now, I chose BGS Ibmore because he's one of them dudes that sort of believe these data points. He kind of believed that it, it, it's that men are just in isolation. But I don't know. You know, he he don't really understand what's going on. I called this before the article came out. I call this based on what I see in the club. I call this based on what I get when I interact with, 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 um, with especially black women. Black women interrogate the hell out you, man, when they meet you, bro. I mean, it's crazy. You don't need to know my shoe size and all that shit, bitch. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to know nothing personal about me. We just met. How about we just take this thing slow and get to know each other? I've been saying that this is why I'm about to start this meetup out here in the Dallas area. And I want to do branches of it all around the country if possible. But I want to do a casual conversations meetup where I'm, where I'm going to get people to understand. Where I'm, I don't want to say teach them, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to try to get them to get back to just talking to strangers like they are strangers. You're not interviewing everybody for marriage that you come across. That's not how they go. Let me continue. He recalled a recent first date that went quite well until the woman interrogated him on their walk home. Interrogated. He said a date went well until the woman interrogated him on the way home. He, he goes on to say she started asking questions about, like, if we have kids, are they going to go to private school? I mean, it's crazy. The dude, like, I just met you. You know, what are you talking about? What are you asking me? I just met you. And you already trying to plan our kids' future, <laughs> our kids' educational future. This is crazy, man. I don't, you don't, you don't even know if you're gonna like me like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm gonna like you like that. We got to go through this process, but they don't want to go through the process for a reason. Now, let me continue. The overall picture is that if a woman is going to go on a date with a man, chances are it's not for a casual fling. Being able to naturally approach people while out isn't like it was pre-pandemic. People are still much less likely to leave their groups or cliques at a bar, said Brown. They're he said, being able to walk up people naturally and talk to them is not like it was before the pandemic, which is bullshit. See, see that, that, go that, that go that pandemic stuff. Pandemic got nothing to do with this. That shit was messed up way before so-called COVID came through. I have been seeing a decline in the way we socialize for at least at for at least 10 years. I've been watching it myself. This got nothing to do with COVID. The problem is, man, we have a bad climate, uh, a bad understanding in in regards to how we're supposed to interact with each other. We got too many experts in our ears, too many dating coaches on the women's side and women feminist coaches telling women what a man need to do, you know what I'm saying? Then we got, on the other hand, we got these red pill dudes now are, are bringing the same teachings to the men. So now our brothers are screwed up just like the women are screwed up. Nobody know how to talk to nobody because everybody think that they're supposed to interrogate everybody as soon as they meet them. You're not supposed to do that, man. Take your time and let a process play out. I'm going to get back to that. Hold Certainly on. Certainly less talkative. And that's lowered my incentive to put myself out there. He said, people are less talkative. I talked about that already. Listen, man, I've been saying this stuff and y'all been getting mad at me. I've been telling you these same things and y'all been getting mad at me. Y'all gonna have to respect my gangster, bro. You know, y'all gonna respect it. I don't feel the need to rush, especially if people don't act as naturally as they did before COVID. Why would I put it all out there for someone who can't or won't hold a conversation? Nah. Let me get to this here. The problem is that we don't understand that there's a process to everything, including how we hook up as couples. You don't meet somebody and immediately start asking them personal questions. You don't meet somebody and immediately start asking them about their income, about their jobs, about what their plans for the future are. See, all this sound good coming from these red pill dudes. Yeah, I'm talking that. See, now all the new subscribers that got about to click off. You know what I'm saying? Y'all about to unsubscribe because now I'm about to say something y'all don't want to hear. But y'all need to hear this shit, bruh. You cannot approach these women like that. Just like you don't want them interrogating you. Because I can tell you now, these dudes that were talking, these dudes are out there. 
these are the kinds of dudes that are out and about trying to socialize. You know, they say they don't want to do social media. They want to get out there. But still, the article blames social media. And the dudes in the article saying that they don't want, they don't want to meet people on dating apps. The disconnect. The so-called expert, experts are disconnected, right? But anyway, I've been telling you, brothers, that you cannot interrogate these people, man. You have to get to know people first. Thinking that, you know, it sounds smart and cool, you know what I'm saying? You need to know a woman's body count. You need to know this. You need to know our income. You need to know, you know, all that stuff might sound cool, bro. But dude, these are personal questions, man. You don't ask no strange woman how many, how many men fucked her. You don't do that, bro. That is improper. Just like it's improper for her to ask you what your income is. Just like it's, it's really improper for her to ask you what you do for a living. You don't know that chick, bro. Fuck, she won't know what you do for a living for. Why the hell she need to know your income? And some of you dudes that got good jobs, y'all like bragging about that. Y'all like throwing that out, but y'all still single. Because that's about the only thing you feel you got that could gravitate or, 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 or pull a woman towards you is it, bragging on your social economic accomplishments and attainments. You don't feel you have nothing else. So you happy to put that out there that you got a college degree. You happy to put it out there that, that, that you make, you know, 70, 80, $100,000 because nobody really make that much money, you know. It's rare to find people making more than $50,000, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I can get into how y'all be lying about your income online, but you can't lie. You know what I'm saying? Look, your incomes are, the, the median incomes are tracked. Incomes are actually statistically tracked. You know what I'm saying? So anybody who can pull this data up right now online and they can look at what the average person is making beneath at least and it's only something like you know uh i think it's more than it's probably 50 percent of the population make make less than fifty thousand dollars and i think it's like 40 percent of that you know 40 percent actually make less than thirty thousand i mean yeah than 40 yeah make less than 40. 50 percent make less than 50 and about 40 percent make less than 40. So you can sit online and lie about your income all you want, man, but your income is already, we, we already know what it is. But the point is, you dudes that do make money, y'all like bragging about that. But that's improper for a woman to ask you about how much money you made, bro. Look, bro, when I was balling, bro, bitch better not ever ask me what I did for a living or how, how much money I had. I had five stores, four, yeah, four, four stores and a flea market location in New Orleans, and I never bragged about money. Most women that I met didn't even know I owned those stores. I never would say. I wouldn't tell nobody anything about my income because it wasn't nobody's goddamn business how I made my money or how much money I was making. That ain't nobody business, bro. That's improper questions, man. No strange person should be asking you about how many kids you got. Y'all just met. How many kids I got is not your business. Do you have grandkids? That's not your business, bro. I just met you, man chick you know sister whatever i just met you you don't ask me about all that shit i'm not about to ask you a, a single personal thing we're gonna sit here and we're gonna talk about the weather we're gonna talk about the clouds in the sky <laughs> you know hobbies hobbies is always something that's non-personal people like sharing their hobbies people like sharing passions right as long as a person's passion is not activism of no kind you know getting get involved in some type of social um, justice warrior type activities as long or, or, or some neoconservative uh uh activism type activities you know what i'm saying as long as your 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 passions are not those kinds of things passions and, and hobbies are always good to talk about you know what i'm saying there are a lot of things you could talk about without needing to go into personal stuff this is why back in the day you know me and the brothers used to always tell people that going to the movies was a good first date not these days, because that shit expensive now, man. Shit, you bring a bitch to the movies now, that shit about $60. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit. You know what I'm saying? But back in my day, it wasn't expensive. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a movie was nothing, you know? I mean, $10 got you both in. You know what I'm saying? Another five bought you some snacks. You know, $15 you paid for both y'all to get in and the snacks. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. But it's not like that no more. You know what I'm saying? I mean, movies are expensive. But anyway, the movies was a good first date second date or whatever because you know it, it wasn't that expensive back then when i was doing it and it gave you something to talk about now you can sit around and actually talk about something right you can talk about the movie what you thought about the movie the acting or whatever you know it's just small talk 
we got to get back to small talk. Nobody wants to be interrogated. And that's what these brothers, these men, rather, in the, in the article, that's what they were expressing, that they don't wish to be interrogated like that. That they're not, wish, they're not trying to talk about deep topics. They want just casual friendship. And the, and the, the article that the experts make it sound like, well, women are not going to do that because, you know, they, they, they feel they want more out of life. Women don't want more out of life. They're the ones leading divorces. They are the ones who walk away from any type of relationship first. They don't want more. They don't want more. They don't know what the hell they want. But they want to get in your business. You know what I'm saying? And it's wrong. In fact, I'm thinking right now as I talk about this. For, for those that have been on my channel for a while, y'all remember I told y'all a personal story about my ex. I tell you, I, you know, I always say my exes still talk to me right about their business because I'm, you know, we, we still cool like that, you know what I'm saying? That's just something I do. I'm not going to explain it over right now. I'm going to move on to the conversation. One of my exes called me up talking about this guy she met, this brother. And um, she got mad because the dude was on hard times and whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying? And she found it out on a date. They was, they was on a date. I guess she started interrogating him, asking him personal questions. The dude was honest that, you know, his financial situation wasn't the best right now. But, you know, he, he, he in between stuff. He making his moves. He doing what he got to do, right? She got mad. She gets mad, you know what I'm saying, and, um, gets a funny attitude to the dude. You know, they, they go separate ways that after the date, you know what I'm saying. She don't want to talk to him no more. She called me venting. Cause she can't vent with nobody else you know what i'm saying she called me venting talking about he shouldn't be dating if he don't have his money right i went clean the fuck off bro i'm like bitch you was never that bougie when you was around me that's your problem you was never that way when you was around me why in the hell you asking that man about how he pays his bills for anyway are you gonna pay him this is what i told her i went i went i got in her ass i didn't play that shit. i'm like are you gonna pay his bills she said, no. I said, did he ask you to pay his bills? She said, no. Did he ask you for money? She said, no. I said, well, damn, the dude is out on a date with you trying to get to know you. Why are you not trying to get to know him? So now a man is not allowed to be on hard times. He's less than a man now. So now he shouldn't have a girlfriend or something. He shouldn't date because he's on hard times. What kind of stupid ass conservative, conservative coon talk is that? That's the problem. See, this motherfucker went out and got a good job around these old white hicks on them plants and shit. And now she forgets that she's a nigga. See, that's the problem with people, bro. That's the problem with people. That man's job is no, a financial situation is no indicator of him as a person. Get to know him as a person. You might not even like him, but on a certain level. Now you missing out on whatever you like him for because you are judging him based on his finances. A question that you shouldn't even ask that man because that man ain't asking you for a dime. He's out there trying to get to know you as a person. Why don't you just get to know him as a person? We got this bad, bro. We, we, we approach everything like we got to dig deep. And we think that shit sound cool. These old dudes be online talking about, you need to know this about a woman, know that about her. You don't need to know shit about nobody when you first meet them, bro. A person is not under any obligation to tell you a damn thing about themselves personally, man. Just like you are not under obligation to tell no woman anything about you personally. I'm funny about that shit, but don't ask me no personal questions. I'm serious. I've always been funny about this. I'm old school. We, we don't like personal questions. We've never liked them. Don't come ask me no personal question. I don't even know you like them. You the police or some shit? What the fuck you want to know my personal business for? You trying to set me up for something? You know what I'm saying? You don't just tell people what you're doing, man. You don't tell people what you got. You know, this is something that was understood when I was coming up. So if a person would ask you too many personal questions off jump, you'll get suspicious of that person. You'll pull off, you'll pull away. But y'all don't do that no more. Because y'all been taught wrong by these people that's in y'all ears on social media. Y'all been taught wrong by these so-called experts on everything, man. You don't dig that. You don't dive right in, man, asking tough questions like that. But when you meet nobody, bro, and I get it, small talk might not be that easy. But this is about you do you do small things. Go take a walk in the park. You know what I'm saying? Go walk around. Look at flowers and shit. Just go walk somewhere. Go sit somewhere, man. You know what I'm saying? Talk and talk about you know passions or something. Talk about hobbies, you know. Some things you could talk about, like, you know, they say that you can't talk about religion or something like that, but you can't if you're an ideologue. But if you say you just 
I'm just a study of nine. You got to stay away from religion. See, 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 it's different times. See, I keep forgetting I'm old. When I was young, we could actually talk about religion with each other. You know what I'm saying? The black community was very diverse religious-wise, and we could sit around and talk about that for hours without getting mad at each other or holding against each other. We can compare notes, compare different belief systems. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was always interesting conversation. But these days, I I, 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 have, to, I have to scale that back, man. These days, y'all can't handle that. Too, we are too emotionally attached to everything that we believe in. You know what I'm saying? And when I was coming up, it just wasn't like that. So let's think of something else. See, that's part of the problem, I guess. I guess it's the way people are, you know what I'm saying? The, the degree of emotional attachment that they have to everything makes it hard to have small talk because everybody wear their beliefs on their sleeves. So as soon as they meet somebody, they want to start immediately shoving their beliefs down this person's throat. And this is coming from both sides. It's coming from the men and the women. It's wrong, man. It's wrong, my brothers. It's wrong, my sisters. We can't be like that. You know what I'm saying? We can't be like that. I would. I, I really like this article, man, because not not the not the way the experts are trying to frame it, but what the people in the article were saying, how they're explaining that they don't want to be interviewed, but the article turned around to make it sound like the black men, I mean, or that the men are just weak, or the men are just into porn and all this stuff, or the men into nah, man, the men, these men that are out there. They, they realize they can't walk up to a, to a chick and talk to her. You know what I'm saying? They can't walk up to the crowd. You no know, women don't leave their cliques. They don't leave their groups. In fact, I, I literally just talked about some of that on that video I did. Not the last one I did. Uh, uh, do I have my page open? Not the last one I did, but the one before that. I literally just talked about that on a video. I'm looking at my page right now. Right here, don't fall for this dating black woman trap. That video right there, I literally just talked about this stuff. Just talked about it. I mentioned how. Hold on one second. I, I, in that video, I actually mentioned how I watch chicks. You know, in the club with dudes, the dudes that get out there and dance with them. And the chicks are like, as soon as the song go off, they'll turn and walk away. Wouldn't even look at the men no more. Wouldn't smile at them. I mean, nothing. I mean, it's just, it's some of the coldest stuff you can ever watch. These dudes be able to trying to get the women attention. Like, they going around the tables where the, where, the, where the women are trying to get their attention. And the women sitting there looking at each other's face like this here. Like, I mean, like, they don't see these men walking around. Like, they don't see these dudes walking around looking at them. They, 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 it's two women at the table in each other's face like this here. Act like they don't see all the dudes trying to get their attention. And then the second a song come on where they gonna get out there and swing dance, they start looking up and the dude go over there asking to dance. They get out there and dance with the dude. But boy, soon as that song go off, they turn and walk away. Turn and walk away and don't even look back. I either said it in Don't Fall For This Dating, Black Woman Trap, or The Five Things Black Men Must Understand About Black Women Before They Date Them. You know what I'm saying? It's in one of those, I just talked about that, you know? I'm telling you, but it's crazy. I watched it with my own eyes. I watched the coldness. I, I, I watched how women treat men. In one club one night, man, the sisters were in there looking good. I mean, them sisters were looking good. Ooh, they was dressed like hookers in that bitch, you heard me? I mean, it was looking good, bro. But they wasn't trying to, I mean, they were clicked up together, taking a whole bunch of selfies and everything. They got dudes in the club now, trying to get their attention. They act like they don't see none of the dudes. This is a real story, and I want y'all to hear this shit. This is a real story. They act like they don't see none of the dudes. They had two white girls in that club, all niggas and two white girls, you know what I'm saying? The two white girls came in together. They went on a dance floor, but they split up. They didn't dance together. They was literally standing by themselves, just dancing. Typical white girl dancing. It wasn't good dancers either. White White girl dancing, you know what I'm saying? But they bought, they split up and they danced separately. I mean, by the time they made two turns around, they had niggas coming at them. Four, five niggas trying to, trying to race to get to them first, you know what I'm saying? And them girls ended up dealing with dudes. I mean, after that, they ended up dancing with a few dudes. They found the ones they liked. And, they, and you, just see the, you just see the progression go. They danced with a few. They find one they like. 
they give him a little more attention and then before you know it both of them sitting at their table at their booth with two black dudes kicking having a good time those sisters that were dressed nice looking good they still in their two it was two clicks of them they still in their two clicks dancing by themselves and they still got a whole bunch of other black men in there that 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 by themselves but they can't get to them and they ignore them even when they went to the bathroom they went in groups what kind of shit is that bro they would not separate for a second because they didn't want to give the black men a chance to try to talk to them. But they in here dressed like hookers. And and you know me, I'm sitting back peeping everything. I'm observing stuff, right? Because, my, you know, my wife is not black either. So I'm sitting there also with an eyeball. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm sitting here with an eyeball. But I'm, I'm sitting back observing. And I can see how the women... The black women in there are looking at me and my girl and looking at them uh, other two brothers and them two white girls rolling their eyes. You see them talking to each other. Look, you know, they look up, you know, one of them look, say something to the other. They all look up, you know what I'm saying? You can, They talking about us. But what the hell y'all mad for? These dudes were trying to get to y'all. Y'all went out of your way so they couldn't talk to you. So now they moved on. The white girls went out, they did it right. They separated from each other, allowed the dudes to approach them. They were approachable and they were friendly. They got them some dudes. Now, I don't know what's gonna come out of it, but all I know that night, they didn't, they probably didn't leave by them damn selves either. They probably got them some horse dick put up in them too that night, you know what I'm saying? That's more than all those sisters got that night. You know what they got that night? A dildo. That's what they got. A dildo and a cold shower. Because that's all they was gonna get acting the way they act. Come on, man. This been a problem. This got nothing to do with COVID, bro. This got nothing to do with no damn COVID, man. This been a problem, man. And I hope I can say that the, the C word, man, because YouTube algorithm be tripping. You know what I'm saying? Be tripping. You can't even say certain things on this thing, man. They, they freeze your video out. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I really hope. I might have to put this through the, um, through the editor, man. Take that out. You know what I'm saying? Take them C words out, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I, be, I don't need to mess with my videos. But anyway, this got nothing to do with that stuff, man. This is a problem that we have with each other, the way we talk. We don't know how to approach people anymore under the understanding that these people are strangers and you don't ask a stranger personal questions, period, period. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to get to know them. No, you're not, but that's nosy. See, in my generation, that was nosy, bro. See, y'all just different, man. My generation, that shit was rude. You just didn't do it. I mean, bro, I got, I know, I know men and women that I've been known, man, 25, 30 years. I still can't tell you what the hell they do for a living. Real talk. Never ask them. They never ask me what I do. They don't know what I'm working on right now. All they know is push yourself and floor. I'm a hustler. They know I'm always into something. But they don't be asking me what you into now. How you make your money. Nobody asks that question. I mean, these dudes, I've been knowing 30 years and stuff, man. They don't ask me nothing like that. Some of them cats I've been knowing 40 years and stuff, man. 45 years since we were little kids. They don't be asking me no shit like that. I don't know what they doing and they don't know what I'm doing. Because we don't, we, we don't ask people personal questions, you know what I'm saying? We just don't do it, bro. You know, it, it's rude, bro. It's rude. You know, so I know I, I just wanted to share this with y'all, man, because I thought that was interesting that, that BGS would put that out there. But I didn't like the way that, that the, the experts try to frame that around, you know, like like men have a sickness uh, because porn is in, interrupting how they deal with women. Now, porn is their escape, you know, it's their escape because all people want is peaceful, casual friendships, man, and, and, and interactions, you know, some peace, man. You know, you don't want to be serious all the goddamn time, man. You don't want to be talking about no deep stuff all the time. How about letting this thing just grow? How about letting this thing just build? How about us just hang around each other a little bit? Look, the personal stuff gonna come out. Don't get me wrong. It's gonna come out, but that's part of the process. Let it come out as it come out. Learn how to just talk about nothing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because sometimes people might want to talk about their day without even going into great detail as to what, you know, you know, anything. They might want to just vent on some stuff without going into detail. You listen. You let them do that. You might want to say, oh, man, I had a rough day at work today, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what do you do? No, that, you don't, don't ask that question. The person said, I had a rough day at work. You say, okay, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. And let them continue to tell you about their rough day at work. You don't ask them what they do. 
They are going to tell you when they're ready to on both sides. And that's how adults talk to each other. See, this is real teaching here, man. This is, this is alpha teaching here, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to tell y'all right. And now y'all got that article. Y'all can look up the New York Post article yourself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if I remember to do this, I might put, I'm going to try to put it in the description, you know? So you can put up the article yourself and read it. These men are complaining about being interrogated. They're complaining about women being less talkative, less friendly, less approachable. Everything that I've been telling you, I've been seeing. It's got nothing to do with porn. And it's not really a connection problem that we have. It's a disconnection problem that we have. We're disconnected from being human. Everything now is about social economics for us. We approach everything from a transactional point of view. What am I getting out of the situation? It's not supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be that way. And that's why all you do is single, man. Say, bro, I, I, I had boo cool chicks, man, in, in, in rotation at one time, bro. And I, I, honest to God, bro, I didn't know what, man, I didn't know what none of them chicks did for a living. Not one of them. Never asked them. I don't know if they had kids. I, I, didn't, I didn't know shit about them, bro. I, I mean, other than what they told me. If it came out in conversation, it came out in conversation. If it didn't, it didn't. But I mean, I dated a lot of women. Like I said, the women didn't even know I had stores. They never knew because they didn't ask. I never had women ask me what I did for a living. All they knew is that I wasn't asking them for no money. That was, that was all they needed to know, huh? You know what I'm saying? That's all they needed to know. You know what I'm saying? I was straight, so you know how, how y'all youngsters say these days. I was Gucci, so as long as they, <laughs> as long as they knew that about me, they was cool. You know what I'm saying? So y'all, y'all doing this stuff all wrong. Y'all doing this stuff all backwards, right? You know what I'm saying? This is not how this is supposed to be done. This is not how this is supposed to be done. You know what I'm saying? Don't interrogate nobody when you first meet them, man. You know what I'm saying? And don't let nobody interrogate you. You know what I'm saying? Brother men, don't let these women ask you about your income. Don't let these women ask you about, you know, where you work. Don't let them ask you that. I mean, they that's something they shouldn't ask within the first four weeks at all. Now, if y'all make it past the month of actually seeing each other, you know what I'm saying, frequently, like y'all see each other at least once a week for a month, you know what I'm saying, and y'all actually spend a little time together, you know, she, they still shouldn't ask, but if they ask, you know, you 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 handle it how you want to, you know what I'm saying? You can handle it how you want to. Me, I still wouldn't answer. You know, I'd be like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Why you won't know, you know, why you won't know that? To me, you know what I'm saying, you, you won't you won't know all that. You, you, your name, your legs need to be spread open. You know what I'm saying? That's just to me, you know. Cause you're getting deep now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Especially if y'all haven't had sex yet, you know, I, I, I don't know. Y'all y'all deal with that how y'all want. I'm just telling you, stop interrogating people. That's, that's that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not gonna get too deep into what I would do, man, because you know, truth be told, I don't know what the hell I would, well, I don't let nobody ask me questions. I don't, let, I don't let my family ask me personal questions, but I don't know what I would do, you know what I'm saying, with these crazy women these days, man, you know what I'm saying? I can't really answer that honestly, so I, I need to stop trying. But anyway, my brothers, that's the message for the day. I'm going to come back at you later on probably with another one, you know what I'm saying? But for those that want to support this channel, it's real easy, bro. Like the video, share the video, share, subscribe to the channel, bro, you know what I'm saying? Hit that bell icon. Go into the comment section. You don't have to leave uh, 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 a comment. Leave an emoji, you know what I'm saying? Throw a smiley face, a crying face, a hand clap, whatever, whatever you feel about it, whatever, you, whatever emotion you got, that's why they call it emoji. Whatever emotion you got, slap emoji down there, you know what I'm saying? That helps the algorithm, you know? Uh, if you want to throw me five bucks or so, ten bucks, you know what I'm saying, to help me get the equipment, you know, keep the channel going, you know what I'm saying, because this is a passion, but it does cost something, you know, and it, and it takes time. So if you want to help me out like that way, you know what I'm saying, and, and all the research I'm doing for, for, for the parallel communities and, and, and the cooperative businesses, I'm doing a lot of research that I want to give to my people, so help me do the research so I can give back to y'all. You know what I'm saying? This is for us, and I'm doing it. I'm, I'm the crash dummy. So if you want to throw some bucks, Venmo at the Black Alpha. Cash app at the Black Alpha. PayPal, realblackalpha at gmail.com. That's PayPal, realblackalpha at gmail.com. You know what I'm saying? Throw a few bucks at it. You know what I'm saying? The Patreon is coming. It's going to be raw stuff. You know what I'm saying? I am working on it right now. So... Soon as it's up and running, I will let y'all know that the Patreon is running. 
Uh, on that note, let me see if I covered everything over here. I think I did. I think that's it. Well, on that note, I'm out of here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha Salon.